Okay, Can we well, do our deep breath quickly? Oh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> this is we, the second we've been okay. in each other's company. We're just like, cha, 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 cha. <laughs> we cannot Hello. stop talking. And I'm like, we need to ground. Okay. Let's just take a big, full grounding inhale through our nose. Deeply and fully just fill ourselves up. And then slowly, easily, let's let it all drop down. And staying very rooted in our spine. Grounded in our breath and centered in ourselves so we can let this energy move through us. Big full inhale, take that in. Then on that exhale, and just letting the rest go. Being here in this moment, with each other, just load up in those eyes and enjoying it because <laughs> we're so. I'm upset. just. I'm like. I did two of your workouts in LA in my apartment last week, and I was like, "This is so nice." No, you didn't. Of course, oh. I do your work. My sisters and I do your workouts every week. Oh my, my team, all of us. What? Of course, we I was in do Aspen do... doing your workouts. Of hundred percent. My team. No, I will have a lunch break, twelve thirty, and I was doing Melissa Wood Pilates quickly. I'm so I know flattered and honored, and you know what? That's what I like about you that you don't have this competitive air about you. No. And like you have an app, you share recipe. Oh. I mean, we have very similar no. businesses in the sense, but no. there is no yeah. competitive I'm not. like energy at all. Thank you. I'm really not. I'm competitive with myself, mm. as you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what, why we do what we do, um, but not with others. Never have been. Never have been. You haven't? No, I don't think so. I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I mean, can't I feel say like that I if, haven't. You know what? Like I can honestly say, and we'll talk about this later, but I haven't had kids yet. And my two of my best friends just fell pregnant. Mm. And I I wouldn't say there was a feeling of competitiveness, but it was like, oh, I'm I'm older now. Like it's more like, oh, like maybe I need to jump in there. It's a feeling of, you know. I'd say, but my father, who's the most special, special man in the world, and he's always said to my sisters and I, there's three girls, and he's always said, like, stay in your lane, don't look to your left and your right. And also, this is different, but also the the feeling of that envy, that jealousy, he always, growing up, I don't know why, he always said, like, never, just don't even let yourself ever feel that. It's toxic. It's, to- it's toxic. It's toxic. He used to say, it's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for you to feel that. So I guess he maybe just inspired my sisters and I to just really look at our own lives in a lot of ways. But I totally, of course, I'm human. I've definitely had moments. I think I'm competitive now with Jay's Health Vitamins. Like I am, I know what our products are and they're actually, it's a very serious company. I'm a nutritionist and I think I know what those products can do for people and I feel myself getting competitive with that I for my customers. That. And you get that. Like I'm almost like, no, 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 I'm telling you, it's the, they are the best products. So it's that sort of competitiveness. I understand that completely. Yeah. I think when you, you're so passionate about something, yeah. which is how you built your entire business, yeah. it's hard not to let things bother you. But it's so interesting mm-hmm. because, I mean, I never grew up as a competitive person. Like I've yeah, always been a solid girl's girl, never a mean girl or tried to bring people down. But I think as my business started to grow, like it's funny, we were talking about this yeah. right before we started, like when things started to really kind of peak, I felt this extreme competitive nature yeah. come over me. Because you're like, this is, now's the moment. This is the moment. Did you feel that? Yes, I did. And funny enough, like with someone in the space, like we had a conversation recently where we both apologized to each other. And it was one of the most beautiful situations that I've, and I won't say names just because obviously, but it was such a great moment of like owning your shit and knowing that you had just like an ugly moment yeah, and not liking it. And no longer wanting that energy as like you move forward as adults, yeah. as mothers. And yeah, but Mel, like, you have to be so self-evolved and so so self-aware and having done all the work you've done to be able to, 
get to that point of doing that. Most people won't go there. Those are the type of people I want to be around. around. Like to say, I mean, I do it all day long with my team. I'm like, I apologize. Effed up. Me too. I really, I shouldn't have spoken like that. (laughs) I didn't handle that situation well, but I think that really does come from a lot of work, a lot of therapy, a lot of pain that I've been through personally and professionally to get to that point where I I just know I'm imperfect. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. It's, I find it one of the most attractive qualities in people when you yeah. have enough self-awareness to Same. apologize. And how freeing. I mean, do you not just feel the sense of peace now? Oh, my God. Not Extreme. just with the person, but with yourself. In- totally. Entirely. Yeah. And like, it's hard to have those conversations. Like, it is painful. Like, you feel that, like, pain coming in your body. And then it's like, oh, no, but it was worth it. You know? So worth it. And that's, and then even all relationships, I feel like, deserve those honest conversations. And it makes it stronger. It makes it... And then it becomes easier and easier to have those harder conversations. I oh. think as you build a company. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to go we'll in that. so many directions with you. But can you take me back? Because first of all, I always thought, I, like your accent, I'm, I know you hear this all yeah. the time, but I always thought you were Australian. I am. I'm Australian. So you're but not just, South African. I'm South, born in South Africa, my okay. husband as, as well. Moved to Australia when I was 13, exactly when my whole journey started because I became this chronic fad dieter and just lost touch with myself and my body and disordered eating. And then been in Australia my whole life since I was 13. And then eight months ago, I moved to Los Angeles. Okay, so you're yeah. officially there. Officially there wow. for my team, yeah. How does that feel? Good. Like, it's so interesting because I have a big life in Sydney, like big family, a really big family. And my in-laws and my parents literally almost live in a street away from us. And my sisters and I are best friends. So it's like this big life. And then De- now it's just Dean and I, which it's going to probably be a year or two. And it's just us two. And we don't have kids yet. So it's like, it's almost, as, it's busy because I'm building, I'm rebuilding now. Um, you know, America started growing. So we're rebuilding. We're back in the building startup phase of our company, whereas in Australia, it's a little bit more set up. And I love the building phase. But also it's like quieter. You know, because mm. at home, I'm like, family, friend, my, all my best friends live in, in Sydney. Um, so I'm like, it's a quieter life in some ways, and which is, I'm just like embracing it. It's really like, I like was um, FaceTiming my sister yesterday, like just burst into tears out of nowhere, you know, because it's painful when you got my new nephew who I'm obsessed with. And then, but yeah, building, I love the building phase. I didn't realize, like, I think I do have an entrepreneurial spirit in some mm-hmm. ways. I didn't think I did because really I'm just a nutritionist. A passionate nutritionist. I've had to learn to be a founder, which is definitely not my strength. It's I, the second I walked in, you give off the strongest bo- like boss vibes. Really? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like it's in it's in there. I it's, wonder if my team would agree though, because as a founder, I'm like way too caring, way too want you to be okay. I want you to be okay. Are you happy? Are you happy? You know, like I've right. had to really learn to pull that strength. And there is a real strong Aries fire in me. Um, I know you're fired too. Oh, yes. So it's like I've had to pull it out of me. Like, because innately, I think I'm soft and kind. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying so that business has made me pull out that strong side of me because I think it might be the only way. Oh, business has made me, I mean... I've always been pretty strong. Yeah. But it's all you have. It's built this entirely new, just like way of being. Lay it, like a new layer. Yes. Almost you feel like covering you. And I really like it. At first, I didn't know how to handle it though. And I was overwhelmed by it. Yeah. I got really stressed out by it. Yeah. I felt sick. Yeah. Even yeah. moving into this office. Because you're probably questioning like, Am I being too strong or am I being like, you, it's almost uncomfortable to be strong, don't you think? I just think it all gets really overwhelming and a lot of people yeah. don't necessarily talk about that in the sense of like to the real nitty gritty. Yeah, you I know? have to say I don't feel enough female founders are talking about the real hardship of building a company. It's the fucking you hardest thing I've ever done. Where it's like, this is so hot. It's like, it's like almost pulling like at my soul to to keep strong, you know? And it's and I am also a strong girl. I can handle a lot. But I think there are not enough founders. I think you do. But talking about those days where we 
don't want to do this. Like it gets so hard and we we will never give up because we care too much and we love what we do too much. Mm -hmm. But there are days where it feels too hard. I mean, I was just, I mean, the fact that we're here together, I'm so grateful by the way that you were so patient and understanding. I was so sick. Yeah. I've never had strep before, by the way, completely (laughs) healthy, not contagious. Don't worry, everybody. But like it was, it came on like a ton of bricks Mm -hmm. and I was like, what the hell? Like, I don't get sick. You needed to rest. (laughs) And I was like, this is so bizarre. Had a week planned of just like really important things. And it just, like life will put you in your place. A hundred percent. Right when you think. And that's, I had so much, I have to be honest, I had so much like compassion for you because I knew I could feel you were sick. And I was like, she just, she just needs a breath. Like I know, and I have to say to you, like I can feel I, only because I feel it and I can resonate with you and it might, might make me emotional. Like I feel the pressure that is on your shoulders. Because your name is on. I feel the pressure that's on your shoulders. Like that's my intuition with you. Like you have so much pressure on your shoulders. You and it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you have so much. And that's what makes you sick. But yeah. like in it just flew. I mean, like it's it's what brings us down because we're holding so much pressure yeah. on our shoulders. And like, I don't think sometimes people see that on social media and see what like they just see this incredible Melissa Wood um, who's built this incredible company. But I can see that you hold so much pressure on your shoulders. And I see that I resonate with it so much. Oh, you're so, so when you were sweet. sick, I was like, no, you yes, were. I know you were sick. I know you had flu. I know you had strep throat. But I was like, she has so much pressure on her shoulders. That's exactly what my acupuncturist said. Oh my God. Yeah. And I just like, no. I had to say to you, I just got this feeling. I have chills. I just felt like I had to say like, you have so, and it's, um, but you can handle it. You're strong. I can. And you and I think that's the thing that needs to be talked about more is this also the moment when you're like, actually, I can handle a lot, but like, I need to cancel yeah, everything. To take care of because yourself. If I didn't, like yesterday, I could have pushed. Yeah, you could. I could have done it but and I we, wanted to. And we push a lot. And, but Dylan was like, no, yeah. you can't. Like, it will work out. Yeah. We'll we'll reschedule it. And I was like, okay, you're right. I'm also, I didn't want to put yeah. other people at risk. You know, like, I was still a little not yeah. 100%. But it, giving myself, like, that third yeah. day, like, I woke up like a revitalized human. Totally. But it is you so feel easy to keep pushing through because you have so many people to show up for. That's the thing. I mean, like at work, my my family, oh it's my so many things That's that bad. if you don't take care mm. of yourself truly, like yeah. when I say like when things start to kind of start knocking on your door, listen, listen before things start banging mm. and then you're like crumbling. I think it's so interesting to me what you're saying because I just resonate so much and everything. You know what I think it is? It's also we're such perfectionists. Like we refuse to let the bar drop, which adds so much pressure. And I just wanted to share what my therapist said to me. She said, fuck it all up for a second. (laughs) She did. The one day what my homework was be, be like, fuck it up. Like don't show up. Oh, I can speak badly easily. Like speak badly. (laughs) Like what if you spoke badly to that person or you didn't make it on time or you cancel. Because for me, the pressure comes from myself. Mm-hmm. Like I will not let the bar drop for myself. And everyone around me, my husband, my mom, they're like, it's okay. Like cancel it. Don't do it. Don't show up. Have a bad day. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I'm always trying to scramble to keep it perfect. But so my therapist is like, why are you not giving yourself permission to like drop, drop it all? Just mm. drop it all. It's all going to be okay. Because I don't obviously trust in my heart, somewhere inside of me from my childhood, that it's all going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. If I let, if I drop the ball for a couple of days or minutes, like it's going to be okay. But it's like so hard for me to do that. I feel like I have to keep, and that's where the pressure comes from. Because you're a perfectionist. Absolute perfection. And it's what makes us successful. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Like it keeps us fighting so hard. But like, then what people probably don't see is the pressure that comes with that. And I think pressure is such an underrated, underspoken about emotion. Like I don't hear enough people saying like pressure eats at you, you know, it really does. And those are the moments you have to pull back, take a minute and then come back oh. and you have, you feel like yourself again. You just, but you need to take, like, I think if you don't take those moments, that's where it gets really oh god scary and dark. 
Yeah. It does. And it all comes falling down. So you said because of your childhood and yeah. there's so much of your story that I connect and relate to on such a soul level. Yeah. Can you just share, because you've built such a phenomenal, successful business. Thank you. Like what in your in your childhood led mm. you to the place of just going through the struggles that got you to to this place. Yeah. Like I always love showing that. Yeah. Journey. Yes. And like how you can go through the thing yeah. that's so hard and difficult and get to a place. Yeah. Where you can actually almost turn it into your yeah. power. And pain pain turns into your power. Yep. A hundred percent. I think for me the most powerful people that I've ever met are the ones who have endured pain, mm-hmm. have to say. Um, so actually for me, I had this beautiful childhood in South Africa and I grew up in a healthy home. It was really rare. Like I had all whole foods. My mom and dad never really let us, well, not in a deprivation way, but we always grew up on healthy, nutritious food. I had a mom who would like, I remember coming home from school who would whip up wholesome meals like she does today in literally 10 minutes. It was just the way that I grew up in the healthy life, which is so lucky and so rare. And my dad also, you know, my our um, childhood vacations were just being active and cooking healthy food and mm-hmm. experimenting. Um, also on the vitamin side, it's so random and rare, but my grandmothers and my great grandmother used to travel to Switzerland to get their vitamins because back in the day it was really hard to get and bring them home. And my grandparents still to this day have rows and rows and rows of vitamins on their breakfast table every morning. So I just sort of grew up with like, take your fish oil, take your vitamin D. But then from the A and then, and, well, we immigrated from South Africa to Australia when I was 13 years old. And that's where I actually lost that sense of balance and wholesomeness that I'd experienced in my childhood because I was going through puberty. My body was changing. I was obviously putting on weight around my hips and I panicked. No one teaches you that it's normal when you go through puberty. You know, like the, I don't even remember anyone saying, remember your body will change at that time. Got my period and put on like a little bit of weight and just felt myself changing hormonally. And I panicked and I discovered fat dieting as a way to control it and being skinny suddenly became my absolute goal in life. It just took over me. I was like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be skinny, I'm gonna be more loved. And that went on for over 10 years. Just like I can honestly say I would have won the award of being the best fad dieter, like lemon detox diet, Atkins, keto. I and the problem with these diets is they tell you completely different things. So by the end of it, I was afraid of all of the foods. Because one diet says don't eat carbs, the next one says don't eat protein, don't eat vegetables, one of them I was on. Hmm. So I was like, okay. But also through all of this, I always knew, and it gives me chills because I knew from the age of 14 that I wanted to be a nutritionist. Like I wanted to be a nutritionist from the age of 14 as clear as day. Like it was, it's a young age to know that. And so still sort of in my fat, it it wasn't even, it was a combination of my obsession with a healthy life in a negative way, but just always from my childhood being obsessed with I, honestly, like the healthy, like so curious about the healthy life. I used, I actually asked my grandmother for my 15th birthday to take me to a yoga retreat. So some of it was an obsessional and negatively mm-hmm. and some of it was, I think, just so curious. Like can food really make us feel better? But I'd lost all of that as a fat diet and I was weighing myself obsessively and counting calories and the, just real disordered eating. And the worst part about that, as you know, is you actually completely disconnect from yourself. Mm. I was just listening to everyone else. I had stopped listening to my own body and I, I started hating myself and my body. I really did. I've had to do a lot of work to stop hating myself and my body. And then fast forward to after school, I knew exactly. I did five years of study. I did a Bachelor of Health for three years and then two years of nutritional medicine. And clear as day again, my end end goal was to be a really good nutritionist in private practice. I knew always. That was my end goal. But in my fourth year of study, I started blogging because I was in therapy and I started, I was slowly wondering, there must be a better way to live a healthy life than being a fad diet. Like surely. Mm. We were, but back, remember 15 years ago when I started, it was fad diet world. You have to remember those days of Been there. <laughs> lemon detox diet from the celebrity magazines. Kate Hudson is doing the Atkins. Let's all go do the Atkins diet. So, so um, I was really, I was thinking to myself, there has to be a better way. But also I was in my fourth year of study, I was learning about the power of nutrients and minerals. Like I used to have panic attacks in my 
in my lectures because I was like, as a fad diet, I was trashing my body. I wasn't eating any of these nutrients and minerals. I was hadn't eaten fats, hadn't eaten fats for honestly, like 10 years. So I would go up to my lecturers and say, oh my God, oh my God, I've, I've only been eating protein or skinny foods like Diet Coke, cans of tuna, diet yogurt. Am I going to be okay? I remember <laughs> asking one lecturer, am I going to be okay? Am I going to live? So I, I, I re-found my respect, my deep, deep respect for nutrients and minerals and slowly started transitioning out of being a fad dieter to becoming a whole food balanced eater. And in fact, I'd never felt better. Suddenly, my hair was getting stronger again. My brain felt better. Like my my mind was clearer. My mental health was better. I, my skin was cl- clearing. My cycle went back on track by reintroducing all those precious um, macronutrients, nutrients and minerals. And then in my fourth year of study, I started a blog. And soon after that, I got, a, I got my first book deal with Pan Macmillan, which led to a second book and a third book. So what people don't know is the first eight to 10 years of my career, I was just a health author mm-hmm. preaching a philosophy. We had recipes, we had an app. Um, and I was just, and then during that time too, I was in private practice as a nutritionist, which were the best years of my life, um, where I got to be face to face like this with females, really hear and see what they were going through, gut issues, skin breakouts, hair loss, anxiety, sleep. And those, those were the years where I discovered my true deep love and respect for supplements, but, and of course, alongside nutrition. So that's what really got me to creating my own line, which we can talk about. But nutrition, I was, you know, for eight to 10 years, I just had this incredible community like you do, Mm -hmm. just preaching balance, preaching. It's not just nutrition, it's also lifestyle and helping women to feel good. And that's even through J's Health Vitamins, that's still my philosophy. I just want to help people feel good. I mean, at heart, I'm just a deeply caring nutritionist. And it's funny because people say to me all the time in interviews, so what's your end goal? What's your end goal? And I'm like, to be back in private practice. Is it? Absolutely. I get to every, I just know like if I picture my life in five to 10 years from now in even um, in our new house that we're building, the front room will be a clinic. Mm. I just know I want to be back in private practice. And when I, I do a couple with journalists or some people who... Um, and my assistant will say to me, you're different today. What happened? And I was like, well, I'm telling you it's from the consult I had because it lights me up. And I know you know that. Like there's oh. some things in what, in the work that we do that like, if I that light me up, light you up. And I think if I, I just know if I had, even yes, I had a little bit of a consult with a journalist and I, I just, my whole energy was like explosive. It just really is my joy. I love that so much. I started as a health coach. Yeah. So working one-on-one with people is how I started yeah. to understand how to talk to. Exactly. Like even just like the phone. Exactly. And to, you know, the audience totally. on social media because I understood on a one-to-one yes. scale what, people, going what through. people were going through, what they... Exactly. This was the thing I think that I learned the most is what people think that they want coming in Mm. usually, right? It's like, give me it, write me a diet plan. Yeah. It's, but it's usually not even the thing that they need. I know, totally. But also how the very simple tools and techniques and tips you'll give them can truly change their health. And I know that's, Mm. I feel like that's what lights you up every day, gets you out of bed because you know that what you're sharing is actually going, like for me, I used to see my client come back a week or two later and I, you know, she would re- reduce her three coffees down to one because my rule is one or two before 12 p.m. Um, or add good fats and protein to her diet and w- watch her energy totally change. And then we would give her magnesium at night and her sleep would totally transform. And coming back into my office one to two weeks later, feeling s- so much better, so much more like herself, that's the most rewarding job. The most rewarding. And I feel like it's that thing that you're like, it's so interesting. And I'm so curious to like see what you think. Because I almost feel as if we're back into this day and age of fad diets. Yeah. Yeah. Like in a sense, like I do think there has been such a movement yeah. beyond labels and all of yes, the things. Yes, there yeah. But I actually see us starting <laughs> like a bit yeah, secretly. Like, I just think silently. people are getting so obsessed with that one thing. Like protein at the moment. Thank you. Like yeah. I just Meats, posted something about it. And by the way, I truly am in a place where I'm eating everything. Yeah. Like I'm I'm eating 
I have so much freedom with food. It is liberating. It's changed my life. But you're tuning into your body. Completely tuning in. But I yeah. think people are so hyper fixated. Mm-hmm. Truly on protein. Yeah. And they've always been, but it's... It's gone like away from the vegan culture to totally flip opposite, I feel, recently. Yeah, but I, I just, I feel like it's gotten back to like a very obsessive... And also like way of being. the Ozempic world, you know, the skinny Thank is back. Thank you, I want to talk about Unfortunately, that. Unfortunately, like skinny is back trending because all the celebrities are right. looking 10 kilos lighter. But I think what you're saying is so, what I've always said, the more we listen to what everyone else is saying and doing, the less we listen to ourselves. And one thing I can, I can, I can see with you after following you for so many years and I can say with myself is I truly tune into my body. And I think you do. I really oh, do. Like, completely. I think... Yeah, I can I can even tell in your in the because the nutrients and minerals help us to thrive. And if we start tuning into our bodies and realizing we're all so biochemically unique. So what works for me may not work mm-hmm. for you. But the problem is no one has even taken the time to connect to themselves. And it does take time. I used to teach people how to reconnect to their appetite and to their bodies because if you do tune in and reconnect, take some time, you really will start to eat in tune with those signals. And that is when your body changes. And that is when you start feeding yourself in a way that supports your entire physical and mental well-being. And so, you know, like for the rest of time, there will be trends that come and go. But all I can say to people is that, and the research backs me up, diets don't work. Fad diets do not work. I've read all the research. I've read all the books from all the incredible you know, nutritionists with PhDs, you know, the results are so short term. So we can we can put ourselves through it, the torturous restriction and deprivation of it. But let me tell you, I was in private practice for so many years and I'm still yet to meet someone who's been able to maintain a restrictive, obsessive fat diet for longer than three to six months. It makes and, me so happy to hear you say and this. And the results, unfortunately, normally backfire. So what's the point? All that happens is that you disconnect from yourself more and more and more and from your body. And so there is nothing more freeing than like my husband and I went out for dinner last night. And I, I'm still amazed that I can even connect to my body after 10 years of torturous fat dieting. Like weighing myself obsessively, by the way, I had to have like an intervention with the scale where my husband took the scale one day out of my hands and threw it in, the, in a dumpster. Best thing you can do. And I went, I thought, okay, he's, I'm going to let him do it because tomorrow morning I'm going to go back and get it and re-weigh myself. Best thing the most I did thing was getting rid of that. Most freeing thing in the world. And it takes a second, you will feel anxiety and you'll feel, oh, well, I'm lost without the number, but no number can ever dictate your self-worth. None. No number. Don't, anyone out there, do not let a number dictate your self-worth. And so I hope people, unfortunately, people have to realize often the hard way that diets don't work and there is a better way. The healthy life is the best life. And when I used to sit down with my patients, I used to say, I'm going to write up a diet plan now and nutrition plan is probably a better word. And I want you to feel like you can do this today and forever. Mm. If there's one thing on this plan that feels, you know, unrealistic or too much or too little, you tell me and we will bolster this plan to work for you in your life because the healthy life is a forever lifestyle. It's not a moment. It's not a fad. And you and I both know there is no better feeling than feeling well and healthy. It's addictive. So I used to say as well when I was in private practice, just get a taste of the healthy. I want you to have a taste of the healthy life and how good you feel. I mean, just this week I was drinking more wine than I normally do. I know you don't drink. And I took six weeks off and I'd never felt better and clearer. And I watched myself. Now, like I t- I'll tell you, I was in all these investment meetings yesterday after drinking the wine. <laughs> and you're just not, I, I, there is no better feeling than the healthy life. And I, I crave it when I don't have it for a second. I'm like, it makes me better at everything else in my life. When I feel well and healthy and clear, I'm better at everything, you know? And so yeah. I just wish that. I wish, and I know you're the same, we just wish that for everyone. And everyone. that's why we do what we do. And I think you believe the same. Like, I know it's possible for everyone too. Totally. Like, even for me laying in bed the past three days, like, <laughs> almost bring me into a depressive state yeah. where I have to, you know, have always suffered with mental health struggles and imbalances. And now I'm at a place where I, f- I feel it coming and I'm yeah. like, okay, 
I'm okay. Yeah. This is going to pass. Like, exactly. I just need to give my body what, you know, I almost have to have this internal totally. conversation with myself yeah. to like get myself out of the way that I'm thinking, but to be like present with doing nothing, <laughs> which What's is very hard for us. Very hard to do. Outside it's one of the hardest things for me to do. Hardest thing. If I have to do a million things in a day, I will do it all. And you'll thrive. Probably. Less is something I'm really, really working at. Like, this is my era of doing less. Okay. Because good. less is more. Totally. And very you tough gain for me too. So much more. I know. On the flip. What do you think it is? It's just we don't feel safe to let go and to rest. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of, you know, even though like, you know, I'm a huge believer in therapy and constantly yeah. just strengthening this relationship with yourself. The traumas that you endure, even as a child, they don't entirely leave Never. you. Never. Right? It's no. like, even though I've overcome so many things, there are still those oh, things that are so embedded. Totally. That well, are just a constant work in progress. Because it molds, you know, parts of who you are. Yes. And I really want to go back to this thought because I, I, I want to talk about this too when we look at just mental health as a yeah. whole, because I think if there's anything that needs to be yeah. the most important. most important thing that we're focusing on. It's strengthening our mental health 100%. and not just trying to fit into a size of genes that you think are going to make you no a better freaking well it more just doesn't make you person. happier does it no. i was my unhappiest when i was my skinniest same unhappiest and most disconnected from myself and probably most most my what well, can let me re-say, re-say this i was um not my be- not in my best mental state as no. a fat dieter so you know, I was just saying this as my birthday lessons from the last year. And the one is, it's so interesting to me that the most important part of my healthy life is a peaceful mind. Mm-hmm. Because when you lose that for a second, and I actually hadn't really ever known I would, um, you realize that is the most important part of the healthy life. And your relationship with yourself, your relationship with food, your relationship with your body is the foundation because you make all of your decisions based upon that relationship. If you have a loving, respectful, kind, oh my gosh, the word kind, mm. relationship with yourself, every decision comes off the back of that. Every single one. And this is like, you literally teed me up perfectly <laughs> yeah. because I think the reason why and I'm going to stand so confidently and sharing this unapologetically because I think it needs to be said and people also need to get really honest with themselves. Yeah. Because people are just feeding themselves the bullshit that they're believing. And that is why people are continually falling back on fad diets, following what everyone else is doing and wondering why there's zero ounce of sustainability in what they're doing. And it is because I think... People are not grounded in themselves. No, totally. They have no sense of a centered self. 100%. Because when you get really grounded in you, and it could be in any way that makes you feel like your two feet yeah. are grounded on that floor. Totally. And, we, you know, I'm sure we have very similar practices, it sounds, yeah. but that is when, when the noise gets louder. Mm -hmm. And you start to hear, you need this many grams of protein per meal and this. You ate this many calories. It's so exhausting. The energy. But when you are grounded, Mm -hmm. none of that stuff gets in. No, it just doesn't. It doesn't bother me. No, not at all. I'm like, I, you know, I can eat the majority of my meals being plant-focused and knowing that I'm getting just enough be fine. protein without like weighing it or totally and for your composition and for your body that might just work for you exactly that's why people forget like I think maybe because you study this when you're in nutrition school like you're so biochemically unique my hormones my digestive system my microbiome is different to yours and so what makes you feel well is just different to me so why would we all be copying what everyone else is doing and saying on TikTok and Instagram <laughs> like it just makes no nut- if you I think you study health and nutrition it makes no sense but I think touching on mental health there is we're living in an era where I've never and as a practitioner First and foremost, I have never seen 
people struggle this much. And we're saying the girls and I, um, Dylan and I were saying outside, there's feeling, what I can tell you with the few consultations that I still do, there's a sense of it's too much. There's too much that the brain is managing, this overwhelm, this inundation of information, diet culture, and just information. And so much on Instagram and TikTok, I don't even have TikTok now because I literally get dizzy Mm -hmm. because our brains, I think, and I have no research to back me up on this, it feels to me our brains are overwhelmed by the inundation and how are we really going to protect our brains because that's our mental health and peace. And I see myself when I'm on Instagram too much, when I'm on social media too much, when I'm watching other people, when I'm looking to my left and my right, it just affects my energy and my soul. And so I really encourage people to do things like I've got my crazy rules where I I delete Instagram every and all my apps at 8 p.m. every night. That's and so I'm great. not allowed to download them until 9.30 the next day. But all these little things, it's kind of ridiculous that you have to put all these boundaries and the word boundaries is the most important thing to take care of our mental health and peace. I mean, I, a few years ago, suddenly got this bout of horrific anxiety that I never imagined I would have, like crippling. And it's, I, I just can, and then, so I guess I'm so in tune with that and how I see so many people struggling with the same. I mean, my therapist has told me that OCD, intrusive thoughts, the statistics of these illnesses and anxiety, of course, depression are higher than ever. So how are we going to protect ourselves from this? You know, and that's really what you and I, why we're doing this work every day. We're trying to figure out what are the things that are going to make us feel more at peace with ourselves because there is nothing like waking up feeling peaceful. I I say a little prayer every night, like, thank you for my peace. May I go to sleep peaceful and may I wake up peaceful. And I promise you, and I say this from my heart, and I don't know if it, I think it happened at the perfect time because our business sort of started really succeeding. Mm -hmm. I was at the height of success and I was crumbling down inside from anxiety. And it was the most humbling thing because I didn't care about anything about my mental health and peace. And even to this day, after really crippling anxiety, period of my life, I cannot, I just know what matters. And for anyone out there who is struggling with anxiety and doesn't feel like they have their peace, there is a way to regain it. I just want to say like I was a practitioner in the health industry and actually feeling like I couldn't find help, mm-hmm. the right help, which is quite scary to people. If you're like, I'm smack bang in the, I had resources like no one else, the best doctors, the best therapists. And I was struggling to find the right support. And so there is support out there. You just need to find the right kind, um, which we can talk about separately. And I think it's really important for people to recognize that you have to prioritize peace. Yes. Peace is not something that just comes. No. That's peace is a practice. Definitely. It's a you did that really well. It's right. It's this coming back to mm-hmm. the habit the rituals, yeah. the supplements, I feel like you can share, I'm <laughs> sure. I'd I'm love actually to obsessed know. with mental, uh, well, supporting mental health through various supplements oh, lately. Yeah. It's changed my yeah. mental health. Yeah. By the way, I took the, I have to tell you this because <laughs> I was feeling a little like, because I haven't been around people yeah. <laughs> in days. <laughs> I'm like, going to see people. Well, no, I was just like, I'm this and da, 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 da. But I took your energy and stress supplement and I it's so interesting because I feel here but I feel like yeah that formulation is beautiful like boosts of energy but I don't feel peaked if that's like that ginseng in there and the yeah you know I'm so glad because I all well all of our ingredients are backed by traditional research or scientific evidence and you're feeling the adaptogenic herbs in there I love it that combination that formulation is I always say it's a combination of that's why it's called stress and energy. It's it's really calm. It's got ingredients in that calm you down whilst boosting you right back up. So it's like the perfect balance. I call it the yin and the yang formulation. Um, I know it's so interesting. I was saying to the girls outside and I was saying to Kat this morning with my, the makeup, I said, oh, Love I said, Kat. how did you know Jay's health vitamins? She's like, oh, I see it everywhere on Instagram. And I can't, it's like so difficult for me that because Jay's Health Vitamins was meant to be a tiny brand. I wanted, I, I remember saying to my husband, please, I want this to be a small boutique brand that's in limited pharmacy because those were the brands that I would prescribe mm-hmm. in private practice. And I, the reason why I started Jay's Health Vitamins is because I was so disappointed by supplements. But Jay's Health Vitamins is a very serious 
very serious medicinal therapeutic range of vitamins. The ingredients in there are all backed by research. Uh, we are known for our therapeutic doses. In Australia, we're a listed medicine. That's how we are regulated. That's how we our manufacturing is controlled, like the caliber of what the quality and the efficacy and the integrity behind our formulations is of the highest caliber. And so when I, when people say to me, I've seen you explode all over Instagram, I'm like, I am so grateful the business is doing well. I really, really am. But with even the deep bloat formulation, what people don't understand is that this, that's a serious formulation that mm-hmm. has three grams of a very special phenyl extract while supporting liver detoxification. And the reason why I did that, there was, by the way, no deep bloat formulation on the market six years ago. Mm -hmm. We really were the first. That is, the the reason why I did that is because people would come see me in private practice and bloating would affect my customers' confidence levels so much. And I thought there must be an ingredient proven in the research to reduce bloating. But also we saw that liver loading, liver when the liver is a little bit overloaded, it can cause bloating because the digestive system and liver are very closely connected. And so what I thought was let's work on both systems at the same time. So while supporting liver detoxification, it's supporting the digestive tract and de-bloating. So what I'm trying to say is J's Health Vitamins is a very serious brand. Even the ingredients you speak about in A and Plus, when I think of those ingredients, the integrity behind them, the way we've chosen them, the quality, the dose, it's really, um, they, I guess, I'm a nutritionist. So how I choose ingredients is um, different to a businessman or a businesswoman. I didn't set, I didn't start J's Health Vitamins to be a business. I promised a hand on my heart. In fact, the opposite, as I said, I wanted to be a small boutique range mm-hmm. because I felt that the smaller, the more trusted. So I'm you so, feel the thoughtfulness, and the thoughtfulness behind the, the yeah. products. And I know people feel that because when they take J's Health Vitamins, they feel and see the difference like you did They're this morning. They're really great. You feel it. Like, oh, yeah. My, I've, I've been like testing so many of them you too feel it. for a long time. And I, I take a bunch of them and I feel really good. I mean, I like them. what lets me sleep at night is I am only going to create transformational vitamins that my patients and my clients, my customers see results with. It's mm-hmm. transformational vitamins that deliver results. Otherwise, it's nothing. It's like you're going to take our magnesium and you better feel your muscles and your nervous system relax and you wake up refreshed. If you're going to take our calm and de-stress, you better feel calmer. If you're going to take detox and de you better feel less bloated. It's like, it's why I started this brand. I care way too much about my customers. I was saying this to investors yesterday. I said, they're like, but how come you're using the best fish oil that's you know, heavy metal test is sustainably sourced, coated in vanilla, by the way, because when I was in private practice, people would avoid taking I fish oil. I have taken that one. I need to take yeah, fish oil. Why are you using Afron? It's so expensive. Why? Because I use the extract that the actual studies have been conducted on with saffron. I don't just use any saffron. Saffron um, is such incredible. a game changer. I use the three, I mean, magnesium glycinate in the, mag, in the manufacturing world. Magnesium glycinate is one of the most expensive raw materials. It almost makes no sense sometimes for companies to use such expensive premium ingredients. Mm-hmm. But it's what it's what's going to make a difference to my customers' lives? Like, mm-hmm. If I know if you take magnesium glycinate, citrate, and chelate, the three best forms of magnesium, at 400 milligrams, dose is everything. What people don't talk enough, enough about is a therapeutic dose is what allows you to feel an ingredient. Mm. And so we, will, we are sort of known, I will go to the highest possible amount that can fit into a capsule or tablet because that's what allows you to feel the effects, to feel the difference. So you know, the truth is the reason why also vitamins have a bad rep is that you walk down, down well, the, the aisles of CVS um, and you'll take 50 milligrams it. of magnesium or you'll see a vitamin C for 50 milligrams or a fish oil that's maybe 500 milligrams and not sure where what fish that's coming from. You will not feel and see the difference. So the reason why I started Jake's Health Vitamins is because I saw what my customers were struggling with, skin health, skin breakouts, hair, bloating, gut issues, anxiety, stress. I mean, I've been such, I, I feel like just in general, like I'm I'm a product junkie. I love skincare yeah. and I live for supplements. I am like, you do. when people come that. to my house, I'm just like, I try. Let's try everything. I like to try. Obviously, I'm careful yes. and, you know, I work with a functional yes. practitioner yeah. just to make sure that, because by the way, just because a supplement is great and high quality doesn't mean you should be taking it. I had to I, learn that the hard way. I was saying this yesterday. I, I, I'm a very traditional conservative nutritionist. I'm not someone who's like, buy all the vitamins. Well, I wish vitamins no. were a prescription. I wish. I wish. I, we are in all pharmacy in Australia. And I, I, one of my goals was to put a nutritionist or naturopath in, in front of our wall of vitamins to help guide 
our customers to what they should take. There are some supplements that people just feel well taking, which is normally a probiotic. That's what I wanted to ask you. Probiotic, magnesium, Magnesium. and fish oil. Mm. Those are the three base. And we have the everyday health range and then we have our signature very popular formulations. But you want to, those are the base ones where I can tell you from doing this for 15 years, people just feel better when Mm -hmm. they take those three. And so I always say those are a really nice base and then you can top them up. I mean, our Vitaly X collagen powder people are obsessed with because it's our inner beauty powder and it's sort of for energy, gut health, skin hydration, skin firmness, and overall overall health and well-being. And you just feel amazing when you take it. So maybe with like topping it with like one or two, if you don't have any specific concerns, topping that with one or two signature formulations from any brand. But I have to say, I always and nothing to do with JSL vitamins, try and find a brand that is created by a practitioner from what you were saying. Mm -hmm. It is just different. The choices that you make when you're developing a vitamin as a practitioner for care for your customers, and I care way too much, versus a business person just trying to build a company, the decision-making is just different because I would compromise. If, you know, my CFO will say to me, Jess, are you sure about this fish oil? It is literally, we make, our margins are terrible. And I said, I'm sorry, there's no compromising here. Are you sure about magnesium glycine? Are you sure about this extra? It's, there's my willingness to never compromise because of my care for my customers. So I say all the time, just on your point, like you can just buy any vitamins. So try and find find a brand that is backed by some sort of practitioner, a nutritionist or a doctor or a naturopath. A great like medical board I always look for. Who, because I can tell you with even just the way I do MPD and product development, I can make very different choices mm-hmm. every day. And, and people do, by the way, and it's <laughs> marketed yeah. As other options. Yeah. So I think it's very easy in this space mm-hmm. to get sold yes. by, you know, marketing terms. Exactly. But to know the things yeah. to look out for yes. is really important. Sometimes people don't even put the dose of collagen or where the collagen comes from. The only science I've ever seen for collagen is marine collagen at 2.5 grams and higher. We're known to have the most premium, prestigious collagen from Norway. Um, It's called Sea Garden. It's the best of the best. I literally didn't believe in collagen until I found this one because of the science behind it for reduction of fine lines and wrinkles, skin firmness and skin hydration. Okay, I'm going to try it because I'm not a big believer in collagen. I look at the back of the collagens and I can't even see where it's from and the dose. We know that the dose only has to be from, must be from 2.5 grams and higher. If you can't see the, and if it's a very high dose, is it coming from bovine? Because I haven't yet seen the research for bovine. And has it been third party tested? Like there's so many things. Testing. I want to touch on that very quickly because okay, in Australia, good. we don't have to third party test because okay. our raw materials are so thoroughly tested for efficacy, mm. safety, and purity. So, I, you know, if I start manufacturing in the US, I have to move into that world. So, you know, Australian products, the raw materials themselves are rigorously tested. Um, so there's no sort of need for third party testing. I mean, it makes sense. Like, yeah. even when you look at the food in the US compared yeah. to. And I love that you love Other supplements countries. because some people will say to both of us, like, but can I get it through food? Yes, you mm-hmm. get your nutrients and minerals through food. What supplements are, is there an additional aid and support? There are therapeutic doses of nutrients and minerals. Now, the truth is we can be doing all the right things, practicing our Melissa Wood workouts, drinking our green juice, meditating, but still suffering with gut issues, but still not sleeping well. That is where the supplements come in. They're an additional aid and support. They're therapeutic doses of nutrients, minerals, amino acids. So if you're struggling with your sleep, for example, there is a lavender oil extract that has been scientifically researched to restore deep sleep and calm the mind. Alongside our formulation has passion flower and three different forms of magnesium. You can be doing all the right things and still not sleeping well, but that formulation has changed thousands of people's lives because it restores their sleep. Mm -hmm. You can be doing all the right things, but still struggling with your gut health. Getting 35 CFU billion or more bacteria through food alone is challenging. That is where probiotic can really help and restore your gut health. And when you know, when your gut health feels good, it changes your life. Everything. And it helps with your mental health too. And helps with your mental health. We know our gut microbiome is completely linked to our serotonin production, which is our feel-good hormone. Mm-hmm. And so people must see supplements as an additional aid and support saffron. Getting that amount of 45 milligrams of an extract of saffron is very difficult through the herb alone. Fish oil, 1.5 grams, which is in our soft gel is going to be very difficult to achieve through eating fish every week unless you're super disciplined, which unfortunately a lot of people aren't. Right. Oh, I could just like, I love all this stuff because I'm... I'm going to definitely send the fish oil. The fish oil and magnesium. I need to try the fish oil. Yeah. The the magnesium, it's 
sold out eight times in America. I don't know why. Magnesium is having a moment. I think I was going to say of all supplements, yeah. I think magnesium is the is one that, the that one? I've just noticed such a difference. Yeah, people with, say that. Because it's helped bring, well, first of all, my nervous system. My nervous system. That's like, a big thing. I think that's, I love when you talk about your nervous system. Because I think that's not spoken about enough. I, I said in the early days of my career, your ner- if your nervous system is balanced, you are balanced. Nervous system regulation, Cortisol. I think is the most, I, I just don't think there's enough of a focus. Okay. Thankfully, I do think it's been talked about yeah. more now, but... It's the most important thing. So like too. when you have a balance yeah. system and I've noticed such a shift in my sleep and in my levels of, I would say like a massive reduction in anxiety. A hundred percent. We know. I mean, the research Increasing claim, my magnesium. A hundred percent. I'm I taking mean, it every day. Yeah. And every day. And and please look at the dose. Right. You really want to see a 400 milligram dose per like one or two tablets per serve. Um, and that's where you feel the effects. And I think the research claim for magnesium is helps to support relax the nervous system, which it is, really does. That's a, that's the research. I want to dive a little bit on women's health with you, yes, because I feel like it's so important yeah. for women to get more in touch with yeah. their bodies and to know if they're feeling lethargic or just like Off. not great. Like my my best friend, I asked her before if I could talk That's about cool. this. And actually Dylan, I asked her too if it was okay because I feel like they went through a very similar thing where they just weren't feeling good. It was like, even like no matter how much you worked out or like ate well, like you just didn't feel like your body was entirely feeling good. Yeah. Like at your like happiest place with yeah. yourself. And my girlfriend has Hashimoto's, which yeah. I believe you yeah. have as well, yeah. which I'm sure inspired. I'm obsessed with the thyroid. I mean, obsessed. I think just like Makes knowing more about this yeah. can change your entire totally. life and like what to look out for. Yes, definitely. And actually, um, iodine is such a tricky mineral because it can help a lot of people with Hashimoto's or thyroid issues. We'll get into that. Um, oh my gosh. I think when when people are feeling off, it's just a multitude of things. And uh, often it can be just stress mm-hmm. and exhaustion and adrenal glands. I'm obsessed with nourishing those little adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidney mm-hmm. that are, if they bust out cortisol for too long, they literally, we know they shrivel and they get really tired. And the signs of adrenal fatigue is waking up tired, but then getting this big wave of energy at like 11 p.m. at oh. night sugar cravings and salt cravings. It's the adrenals. And I think we're living in a world where it's almost impossible not to have cortisol busting out all day. As I said, we, even when we look at our phones, what people don't realize is scrolling really adds cortisol to our bodies. There's no data to back me up on that, but that's what I feel my cortisol pumping when I'm always on social media, when I'm always scrolling, like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And it must do something to the dopamine and serotonin. It has to. Depletes. It has it, to. Like- that's so, why you feel empty when yeah. you spend so much time on social media. Like, who walks away and they're like, huh, feeling revitalized. 100%. No, you don't. You feel drained and like you just got an hour of your life sucked away from you. 100%. Know? And I think like, as you said before, when that nervous system is supported, when the cortisol is managed, that directly affects your energy levels, your blood sugars. It directly affects your sleep. So it's all interconnected. I have. I don't know why I'm feeling, I feel like I need to talk to their nervous system. Sometimes I am weirdly intuitive with people's health and I'm, I know you are too. Like when I think of who you're talking about, I, I feel that it's their nervous system. They've been doing too much for too long. And how are we going to restore their adrenal glands? Adaptogenic herbs are incredible. The formulation you took this morning. The best. Magnesium, incredible. Through food, well, how much caffeine? I have a rule of one to two coffees. I love my Do you coffee. Drink coffee. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it gets me to my desk every day. It's like my ritual. I, like I know you too. I, like, I do love it's, coffee. It's just a heavenly. I always say coffee is. It's my a moment. It's a moment in the day, especially if you're a founder and you're running a business. Like, what is better than sitting at your desk with a coffee? Like, heaven. But you know what? I have discovered, like, waking up and having it doesn't work for me, but okay. I have it later. later. That's fine. I Perfect. think I have it a little too late sometimes, What's which... What's the time? <laughs> One? Twelve? One, two. That's okay. I just, like, pre- preferably before two. Right. So I would say to your best friend um, and Dylan, I'd say how much coffee you're drinking. I'd like you to stop. Dylan doesn't drink 12. coffee. Okay, good. Yeah. 
how is your sleep? Like this is the, the questions I would ask as a as a nutritionist in private practice. Like how are you sleeping? How deep is your sleep? Because we know REM sleep. We call we people think they're sleeping well, but are they really? Mm. So let's look at your sleep. Let's see if we can give you magnesium. Let's see if we can give you some other research backed ingredients like the lavender oil extract to deepen the sleep. So because we all know when you have that REM sleep, you just wake up feeling like a new person. New person. I'd say how are those adrenals going? Are there the symptoms of waking up tired? That big wave of energy at 11 p.m. at night, that profile of um, adrenal fatigue. Let's let's look into that. I'd say, as we know, check in with yourself and your therapist. Like sometimes you just need to talk about something and let it out. Oh, We're yes. all holding so much in and sometimes a big cry. I like, I actually had a big cry the other day and I literally was like, I feel so light. Oh yeah. You know, I cry a lot. So my so gra- my I. grandmother, <laughs> my grandmother passed that on to me. She even said to me, she's, she's just turned a hundred. <gasps> And she Stop. said to me, she goes, you got it from me. I was like, I know I cry so much, but I think it's my release. And I, I sometimes look at people and I'm like, I feel like they should cry. Oh, yeah. I, I need to just cry. I mean, even just starting when yeah. you got me a um, little emotional, which I, I wasn't feeling like I needed to cry. But I think we all kind of need yeah. to cry. <laughs> yeah. And also from what I was saying to you before, and, and I hope it like I said it clearly, like I just feel intuitively with you. What I resonate with you is that. Pre- is that there's so much pressure on your shoulders. And um, I guess every female might be feeling that too. Yeah. And your best friend and Dylan, like that pressure, I think, must add a lot of weight to our bodies and our minds and makes us tired. Yeah. You know, I, I, was, I had six different meetings. Yes, I have to be honest. I had a day where I was like, it's too much. Thank God we canceled. Yes, I know. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, I, I don't know. What what the heck? Like, I'm one person. I had I ate six almonds the entire, which is ridiculous. That's just stupid. Right. I never do that. And six different meetings with six different inv- investors. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. But I'm like, I said to my husband, I said, I'm one person. Like, I also now need to do my emails. I also need to prepare for the podcast where I need to be clear. And but I just want to say, I think that that emotion of pressure, that that feeling of pressure must add weight and exhaustion to people. So if your best friend can ask herself, where is my pressure coming from? And mm. is there a way that I can strip back and step back and take a moment and find space? Is there a way of doing that? So that's, that's sort of some of my tips for her. So beautiful. And one thing I've heard you talk about before, which I've I've learned from you, but when there's stuff going on with the thyroid, yes. you said to look at the antibodies. Yes. So, so right? that is a big thing. I even went to a doctor the other day, a fertility doctor, and I was so surprised that he never said, because I'm a nutritionist. But I know you. How? Huh? Oh, well, yeah, exactly. And I mean, I was like, why are you not checking my thyroid profile? Which I had to ask. Can you do my thyroid? Because I obviously know how to tweak my medication, and I know the numbers. I'm, I'm. I have to say, I'm really, really good at treating the thyroid gland. I think in my, I don't know, when I'm back in private practice, I think it might be my one of my specialities. Because when your thyroid, sorry, coming, I forgot to come back to the thyroid. When your thyroid is like, off, you really feel off, and we know that Hashimoto's and thyroiditis and thyroid disorders are a hundred percent on the rise. We don't know if it's because we're lower in minerals. We know zinc. Iodine, selenium are the three most important minerals to keep our thyroid healthy. So it could be that we're not getting enough through our food. It could be because we're compromised with our digestive tracts. Um, it could even be stress. We know cortisol directly impacts T3. So we have TSH, which converts into T4, which converts into T3, and that is the active thyroid hormone. Now, a lot of people aren't converting from T4 to T3, and cortisol can interrupt that conversion. So why we feel tired, mm-hmm. and that's why the, when the TSH goes up. And the other part of it is antibodies, Hashimoto's hugely on the rise. So if you're feeling, re- the, the signs are fatigue, puffiness, not feeling like yourself, just lethargic, off, just feeling off, hair falling out. These are some of the main signs. And the best thing to do is go to your doctor and get a thyroid panel, not just the TSH. I know Lauren from Skinny Confidential, I've spoken to her about this. She um, asked, and gosh, for a thyroid panel and saw it changed things changed for everything. Her. I'm on a small amount of medication and I take nutrients and minerals to support my thyroid gland. So you can add some people don't need to go on medication. Like we have a thyroid formulation that is beautifully balanced with all the minerals that support it. So some people can actually treat it through diet and supplementation. And some people go on medication. And for mm. me, it's genetic. My grandmother has it. So okay. it can really be genetic. But I love your approach that it's not. It, that it has to be like this one no. way. No, and I feel, I, what if you, I mean, when I was studying nutrition, I worked with doctors. I, I was part of my prac. I had to go sit with a doctor for hours and hours and months. And so I have to say, I always said I have the deepest respect for both 
for both Western medicine and nutritional medicine. And when I went through my anxiety time, I was literally bedridden for six weeks with crippling anxiety. And I went on SSRIs and mm-hmm. I also took supplements that have been proven to support mental well-being. And I did both. And there's, mm-hmm. I have the utmost respect for both, you know, like yes. sometimes we need to take medicine. I agree. Sometimes. I totally agree. And we're lucky and I, to have it. Access. I think there's so much shame and guilt. <clears throat> I think especially for people in the wellness space. Yeah. You well, know? I have to admit, I felt so much shame. Nutritionist in Australia, I'm like the darling of nutrition. It's... I don't know if I should say that. In some no, ways, you are. In, in Australia, I was this nutritionist that the, you know, JS Health. And surely I can treat this naturally. You know, there was so much shame. And my best friend who passed from mental health, I, I know I, that must have gotten her in the end. It's just the shame of the shame of having to take medication. I remember her always complaining to me. And I used to say, but who cares? Like I, but then when I had to go on it as the golden nutritionist, There's shame. There is shame. And I had to really work on myself to say, Jess, there's no choice. You have to, you have to support yourself as well alongside all my nutrition philosophy and supplements and, you know, lifestyle adjustments. Both can be really powerful. Really powerful. And even just going back to prioritizing your peace. Yeah. Like medication could be, you know, a component that helps you to get to a more peaceful totally. state with yourself. Totally, 100%. And just because of fertility reasons, I've made the choice not to be on it right now, but the, I firstly never go off. I went off really, really slowly but with a doctor, yeah, tapering off. But there is, I can say, like, it helped me in different periods of my life and I have no issue going back on it. Like, And I talk about it. I'm a nutritionist that yeah. takes all my supplements and sometimes I need additional support. I love your openness and just... <laughs> I can be way more open than this. <laughs> well, let's go. <laughs> what there. do you want me to say? <laughs> well, no. Intrusive know, thoughts, well, pure OCD, I have. I mean, <laughs> yes, because I think someone looks at you and they think, mm. like, what are you thinking about? Well, I That's can intrusive. tell everyone that I have really like challenging times. And so let's take social media with a pinch of salt. And I try my best. I feel sometimes wrong. Like, I love that you do this, but I feel like. I have to share my struggles and challenges because I feel like it's wrong for everyone just to see me living my life in Aspen like I did last yeah. weekend. And I do live the most beautiful, extraordinary life. I, I love my job. I love my career. I have the most beautiful marriage. That's most so sacred to me and my family and my friends and all of it. But I also have like really scary thoughts mm. and really dark days and days where I just put too much pressure on myself and I'm a raging perfectionist and it feels all too much. And that's, mm-hmm. I'm a very sensitive person. I feel energy more than everyone else. My mom has always said that you feel things so deeply and that's how I was born. And like, it makes me really good at my job. It makes me connect to my customers and turn at another level on my team. Actually, I had a team member message me my Australian team member messaged me saying, I'm, we're lost without you, like my team. Mm. And I was so, because I'm, I'm not the CEO, I'm not a big force in the team. It's not really my day-to-day. I'm not really, like, I don't really run the team. Okay. But I feel grateful she said that because they can feel my warmth and care for them. Yeah. Even though I'm not, like, managing them. You're the, the foundation of the Yeah. Energy. They feel, and I think they're so passionate about the brand's ethos. But, yeah, I just want everyone to know, like, I try my best to show both sides because yes, our lives that look like they look perfect on social media. And I mm-hmm. have, as I say, a beautiful life that I'm so appreciative of, appreciative of. But it's also important to know that every human being is fighting battle, a battle mm-hmm. of some sort. Like I have not ever met one person, especially a successful one, that isn't fighting some part of themselves. Or, or managing something really hard and painful. And that pain and hardship makes us so good at life. Let's not wish it away. Like my journey of anxiety, my journey of crippling intrusive thoughts, like mine is all about fear of loss and, oh my God, is everything going to be taken away from me one day? Yeah. Um, and my, the people in my life and my business, like everything that matters to me is all going to be taken away. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of fear around that. Um, and so just really important to know that this is life. Like it's all of it. It's incredible. It's joyful. It's painful. It's challenging. But 
I used to wish away the pain. Mm-hmm. No, don't. Like my husband will tell you, I used to be like, no, 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 I don't want these intrusive thoughts. I don't want the anxiety. I don't want hardship. Like hands, like my therapist always says, like I do this almost. And now I've gone like this, like come to me, come because I am a stronger, better person because of the pain in my life. And I can deeply connect with people. Like even I feel I can connect with you. Mm-hmm. I can connect with Dylan. I can connect with my customers. I can speak to my community in an authentic, honest way. And I know that they feel my authenticity. They feel my care and kindness. Like, And I, it's like, as you know, it's just o- pain like o- cracks you open yeah. to be even more real, to be even more authentic. Because when you see dark days, you know, you just pull at every part of you to be strong and it then makes you stronger in everything. Like my career, it has probably strengthened me to be better at my job and more honest, more open, more vulnerable. I can have those hard conversations with a friend or a coworker and still work in progress. You know, it's so interesting as you're sitting here talking and I'm just like, I felt this way when I first, like, we first met in person today, but I've been following you for years and you're just this beautiful goddess and you share these beautiful recipe recipes <laughs> and just like, you know, make us all want to live a healthier lifestyle with your supplements and just your way of life. Yeah. But just even just listening to you for this moment just made me like love you even oh, more. Thank you now making me cry. No, but it's really thank true you. because I think people, that's the thing about social media. It's this perception. Yeah. And it's like, Take well, she pink. has this and uh. she has a, and it's like, well, what do you, and I think it's so important mm. for us to feel supported that we yeah. can actually share that truth yeah. and that vulnerability. Yeah. But like I've always struggled with my mental health. But I feel like the more you tell your community, like the more they just love and respect and appreciate you because thank God you're saying it because someone on social media who has it all is so successful, is so brilliant in so many ways. Like thank you because when you sometimes share it, I like feel just heard. And I think it is our responsibility as people with a big following to continue to show the imperfect parts of life because yes, we have all the beautiful things, but we also have challenges and struggles yeah. and pain and everyone does. So everyone let's take social does. media as the tiniest pinch of salt, the pi- tiniest pinch of salt, but also encourage others to keep sharing. Because the truth is I sometimes do get caught up on the, in the trap of looking at social media and thinking, how come that? I literally said to my mom that I was like, but no one else has anxiety. Like no one else struggles. No one else <laughs> has, am, am I the only founder that has days where it feels all too much? Because I've never seen a founder say it really. I think you have maybe, but I've never really I mean, seen. I'm like, they're I all feel much, like sometimes I'm like, they're I'm all like, much stronger much? than me. You know, I'm like, they're all stronger than me, mom. Maybe I'm just, I'm just so sensitive. Like I can't handle it as much. And then I speak to people. I'm so lucky that I can speak to females every single day and I yeah. hear their struggles oh. every day. I mean, my therapist tells me what she sees and hears and um, just we're all fighting a battle alongside a beautiful life that we're all appreciative of. Um, you know, I've been open about the fact that I've been terrified to have children. Yeah. Like I've been, I'm so scared. Can I do it all? Can I, how am I going to feel about balancing a career whilst having kids? And am I going to lose everything? Because my fear is all about loss. Um, am I going to lose everything when I have kids? You know, just that feeling of, and I think sometimes when I put that out, and I have mentioned a couple of times, I have a fear of ch- having children. Like people resonate so, so much. Yeah. I mean, that's so real. Yeah. And I felt the same exact yeah. way. Like, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't have my business yet, but I remember when Noah and I started talking about yeah. trying, yeah. he fully manipulated me into getting pregnant, <laughs> but like it worked <laughs> because I was not, yeah. like, I was like, are you kidding? I would never want to have a child before my career took off. Yeah. And that stood in my way. I felt that throughout my entire and look what, pregnancy. And look what happened. Well, because I I learned that I had to... But also there is no perfect time. There is no perfect There is no perfect time. And I've like sort of, I've like, I've created a false narrative in my mind that when I get to a certain point, I'll feel like I can. And you never, I mean, my, as we said, business, people must know, business only gets harder 
as time goes on, as it grows, as really the team does. grows. It, <laughs> it really it, does, I, How come no one told us this? Like, I have never had anyone say, no female founder said to me, just no, it gets harder. I thought it would get easier. The more, t- the more staff you have, we have 65 staff. I'm you like, do. I'm like, okay, surely that's, gonna, that's easier. That's, that's going to make life easier. No, it makes it all harder. And business is so hard. And I also want to say that because there's so many beautiful, young female entrepreneurs listening to you, following you, listening to us who see it and see it, oh, it looks so easy oh, it's not. and so effortless. <laughs> Please no. And that's okay. I'm, I'm only saying it just to prepare them because I wish someone had said to me, look, you're going to have success. You're going to have a great company, but it's going to be really hard. It's going to test you to the core most days. Mm-hmm. Most days are unglamorous. Most days I'm sweating in not even little lemon in, I don't even know what, some days, <laughs> you know, just trying to find 20 minutes to have lunch. It's a lot. And I just, I say it only, because I'm not complaining, I'm grateful, but like young girls in particular must know this is not a glamorous journey. It looks like it is, but it's hard, hard work. And the only way to achieve is through the hard, hard work. Um, and so, I just think I just want to say that because I think people think this is an easy. And I, I know we are both the face and the founders, but we are also entrenched in the everyday running of a business. And I think the pressure that comes with that is enormous. It's massive. Like, I'm, as I said, I don't always run the team, but I'm still managing a lot of aspects of the company. Your husband is the CEO. Yeah. Dean, who's yes. lovely and yeah. so grounded. I feel like being around <laughs> him, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, you guys have a nice. Well, he's, li- he's Libra. You have a balance. nice balance. Thank you. Your energy. Thank you. Really. Like, Thank you so much. It feels like nice to be around. Oh, that means so and much And what is it like me. working with your husband? I can't say I do because we don't have anything to do with each other. I'm the only person <laughs> who's never had access to Shopify in the company. He's all numbers, all CEO, all business. I literally don't, I know roughly when the, how the business is going, but I can honestly say hand on heart, I've never had a login to Shopify. So I don't no, but you get the reports. I, like, I'm like aware and of course I want the business to do well and I only do product development and customer stuff. I'm on all our customer support meetings. I do a little bit of marketing stuff. So the thing, the why it's worked, I mean, I told you my parents work together. Literally their desks oh, touch. I didn't know that. Oh, did I tell you? No. Uh, my parents work together and Dean's parents work together as lawyers. Wow. They, we all, so I guess we've seen it and it's modeled and I, I'm very strict. My mom is a relationship counselor. So I grew up in a home where maybe too much so, she <laughs> prepared my sisters and I. <laughs> like, she was also a sex counsellor. Okay. Um, and so it's incredible to grow up with that because she just has normalised everything, the ebbs and flows, and you go right. through periods where you have sex and you don't have sex. We grew up in an incredible, vulnerable home, my sisters and I, Beautiful. where there was just realness around relationships mm-hmm. and sex and everything. Um, and so with my, I think she has always taught us to set boundaries so we can look after our relationships. And I, Dean will say I'm too boundaried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so strict. Me because too. <laughs> I'm like, you're entering and I'm reading my book and yeah, this space is yes, not for you. I, I'm the same. And I'm like, are you coming in here with the work energy yeah. or are you coming in here to relax and go to sleep? Because I think I'm too, I think... He'll say, he would say, I'm too protective of our lives. I'm, I, there's something about a private, which I calm. the more success you have, the more you want to go it's private and small and quiet. And you start to really look yeah. at who's in your orbit. And you want to protect, protect, protect. And you become so clear yeah. of people that it doesn't mean you Definitely. don't care for them. No. You don't wish them well, but maybe that aren't so post and as close and did sometimes you get that sense of maybe sometimes people aren't wishing you well oh oh yeah which <laughs> i With think love I'm, and light hun <laughs> peace <laughs> well i feel I'm like sorry. i'm protective of, of the energy 40s, i put like I evil eyes everywhere <laughs> i'm like evil eye. i put it i literally want to be an evil eye because i'm like <laughs> i make my mom says i make well, it I gave up. you a crystal yeah you where's did. her crystals <laughs> Where yeah, I'm, too, I'm probably up. too protective i need to feel safe i need to remember that most people are wishing others well and i i, I think when i think sometimes success scares me same and see, it comes with a lot. I know a lot of success. And you do too. I know I a lot, lot of successful poor. people. Like, I know. It's, it's insane. I, yes, I, I'm sure. I feel like it must feel fear. so unnatural. And my, my, there was a lot of financial fear as well growing up. So I feel like sometimes it feels to me, the successful people I know in my life, like it comes with consequences. Mm-hmm. And I try my very best to protect 
the peace yeah. and the privacy as much as I can because we have public profiles. Right. Share, showing us, sharing our lives is a lot of our jobs, right. a lot of what we do. You have a lot of energy constantly. Coming. So don't you feel you, I feel you feel this. Like we need to, I feel, it's a constant battle of sharing, sharing, sharing. I'm a vulnerable person. I want to share I all like of it. I want more of you online. As I feel like I need to <laughs> I tell know. you that. Thank you. No, because I'm just I like, have, you're so delicious and you are online, but I'm just like. I know, I don't, I don't. I get, I want, you know, I'm too scared. I I'm feel being, like you just, you're such a source of knowledge. Thank you. And you have so much, like, I'm just like. No, I appreciate that. That's a, a good sign because everyone has been saying that to me recently. No, I, I want more. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you straight up. <laughs> Means the world. By the way, the thing about social media, like I know we've been talking yeah. about the negatives and the scrolling. Yeah, the positive. When you follow people who are aligned yes, aligned. with you in your life yeah. and, and people you learn from, you grow from, yeah. that just vibrate on the same frequency. Follow people who vibrate on the same frequency as you or higher. And let me yeah. tell you, social media becomes a different place. Sure, you're right. You're when 100% you right. When you spend time on it, right? You're right? Dedicated boundaries time, it will give you something instead of drain you and drop you. 100%. The people you be who drain the right and people. drop mute unfollow. I'm sorry. You're With right. Love and you're light, 100%. Work on your stuff. Do you like 100 People need to work on their their energy. No well, like, one wants that. Most people don't, you know. And so I agree. I think let's make social media a positive place and it's true. Like, I want we're more just from you. kind, good people. <laughs> Thank you. I'm literally going to take Jay it because I, when team, I see you I talking, want more reels. I want her talking to camera more. Yes. I want you, when you're doing your mate, I want to hear what's going on. You know, when you talk to camera, like, I literally, I feel, you know, I told you I never get jealous or envious, but I think I get envious of that because I, there's, I have so much. I'm the the more success the brands had, the shyer I get. The mm -hmm. more like, as I said, closed and private. And I'm like, I don't want to share too much. And then I've like sort of closed myself off. Yeah. And that's not good energy either. Like, I need to be me, and I need to feel safe to be me. Yeah. And share and educate, and that's my passion. You know. So one thing that I've been working on, I'm going to share it with you, and I think something we can all work on is. Like after I do my practice, so meditation, maybe it's deeper breath work, kundalini, whatever it is, it can range and vary. Or even if you don't do a meditation, mm -hmm. just taking like the grounding breath that we did in the beginning. Yeah, we'll make sure really we leave that in helps. because I think it does yeah, really help. It does. And then call in whatever you connect to, whether it's Okay. Uh, even if you're like, I don't know what I'm calling in yet, but I'm just calling in my guides, a higher power, yes, your archangels. If that feels a little too, your spirit guides, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then to scan, clear, and protect okay. your energy. Love That's that. been like one thing that I've oh, really no, I enhanced love that. in my practice. No, I really appreciate that. But you'll feel it. No, because I think I'm like, I think I don't, yeah, I love what you just said to like, and protect my energy. Because I think if I go on and speak so much, like I'm I'm giving too much of my energy away, which I need to put into the business or give to my my husband or give to my family. But you're right. Like if, if I do a beautiful prayer of like, of protecting that energy, which I do believe in. Oh, I really works. I do. And I okay, but that's crystal. really going to help me. I'm telling you, it really does. And <laughs> then we'll me. do a live. Okay. Because I want, I, I just like, I want more of you. I feel like Love so you, Mel. everyone and, and is going to want more of you. Thank you. And let's just remind everyone that I was a uh, Melissa Wood OG. <laughs> <laughs> way before, I'll tell the story that I was following Mel way before she got so big and famous. And I was speaking to Dylan, who was just lovely. And I was we need to work with Mel. We need to work with Mel. I, I know that she'll love our vitamins. I know they'll transform her life. They're amazing. And then she literally messaged me one day. She said, I don't know if you've seen what's happened, but Mel has blown up. <laughs> and I did I... see what happened. And then I was like, oh no. And I've been a fan and I just love your realness. And I am so grateful for your beautiful, beautiful time and energy and realness. And from female founder to female founder, I just wish you all the best. And may we continue just to be authentic, real, vulnerable to ourselves and to our communities. That's all I wish for. You're such a beautiful soul. And just Thank like, you. I feel like we all need you. We need more of you. Like that, <laughs> that's more. what I left from this oh, conversation. Thank you. I think that's like a real little sign for me. I'm telling you. No, I'm just like, I want you speaking. I want you on stage. I want, okay. like, I see a lot. Let's do a stage event with Let's Lauren. Do <gasps> Let's do it. <laughs> with Lauren. Seriously. Honestly, thank you for you are, uh, asking me such real questions. I think it's so important to 
Thank Share you for sharing from You're your good heart. You're good at this. You're good at this. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, You're such love. a like beautiful soul. <laughs> I, I just, I...